You're working fast pace. It's crazy to build and release tons of new features in this application that you're trying to release and all these tickets are flying in as bugs that you need to fix. You're starting to commit and push code. Things are getting added and removed and updated and fixed. It is just completely crazy and chaotic. And how do we manage this whole process and allow users and customers as well as internal developers and staff to know what is going on with our product? This, my friend, is the importance of semantic versioning. Software upgrade versioning is the process release of assigning either unique version names or unique version numbers to unique states of computer software within a given version number category, either major, minor, or patch. These numbers are generally assigned in increasing order to correspond to new developments in the software. At a fine grain level, revision control is often used for keeping track of incrementally different versions of information, whether or not this information is computer software. Sember.org is the way to go when it comes to learning about semantic versioning from the specification itself. Getting it from the spec is a great way to start understanding what is going on with semantic versioning, but how do you go about versioning your application or package? Well, there are a number of phases and we'll cover them now. Pre-minimum viable product is also known as alpha phase. And in this phase, you're essentially working on your application and building towards a minimum viable product, but there's no point in really giving any version here because really it's not even a usable product yet. Your application isn't even useful. So during this time period, you're not going to be giving any version other than zero. The next phase, alpha, maybe beta, this is where you're going to have a major, minor, and patch version. So once you reach a minimum viable product, you're gonna be able to iterate and create a alpha beta release for your customers or users to use and give you feedback on and hopefully put in issues for bug fixes. And when you're creating your first release, you'll want to start versioning with your first release. And this will help you keep track of those changes to your application and create a historical timeline of what features were added and what bugs have been fixed or have not been squashed yet. And you might be wondering like what exactly constitutes a major, minor, or patch in a release. So we'll cover these different releases. A major release, this is an increment for the first digit and it's if the new features break backwards compatibility or current features. So it's a pretty large release. A major release doesn't happen every dev cycle or every sprint. Uh, which will cover sprints and agile methodology and scrum in another video. In minor releases, incrementing the middle digit by one, per, for example, if the new features don't break any existing features and are compatible with the app in its current state. So this might be something where you're updating a feature, but nothing really breaks existing features. So you might have, you know, in the beginning, you release at version one because your application is no longer in uh, not, it is actually now MVP, so it is 1.1.0 perhaps if you had a minor release after your major release. And the final is a patch release and incrementing the last digit by one if you are in, if you're publishing a uh, patch or a bug fix to your application. So for example, you might be on major release version four uh, with a minor release version nine and a patch release of version two, which would be 4.9.2. Regardless of how tired I am, we have successfully and concisely covered semantic versioning efficiently. I am going to go downstairs and have myself some chicken nuggets. If you have any further questions about semantic versioning, I would just go to the spec 2.0.0 and read further. I will also link an article by Flavio Copes of semantic versioning using NPM and an article from Matthew Setter over at Codeship, which covers best practices when versioning a release. There's not much more I want to say about semantic versioning, but it is important and the reason why we are covering a lot of different videos and content that isn't necessarily programming uh, in this series so far is because it is important to understand more than just how to program and a specific language. And that's what I'm trying to cover. We are hopefully going to get into real programming very soon. I have a couple of other videos that I'd like to put out uh, and I think that it is good to have this in the road to development series before we start developing. That being said, thank you so much for the support. I think we're at 
30 something subscribers now, which is incredible. I can't believe anybody would subscribe to my channel. Uh, of course, please like and provide a comment below. If there's any resources that you think are beneficial to anybody regarding semantic versioning, please comment them below. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.